Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I have a baby card to share with you featuring some products from Hello Bluebird. The most important one is this adorable stem set called Sweet Dreams and I will also combine it with the nesting decal mini slimline die from Hello Bluebird. But first let's start with the coloring. I decided that I wanted to feature three cuties uh, so I decided to go with the bear, the koala and the fox, uh, which are three adorable critters. Um, I'm going to give them all a specific color, so I will not reuse combinations, but I will use some markers again, as you will see later on. If by any time you want to revisit color combinations without watching this video completely, uh, there is always my blog post where I have everything listed for each part of the coloring. Um, and I'm always adding a link in the description box of my videos. If by any chance you want to know what I used except for like basic supplies as blending brushes or anything like that, uh, I am also listing everything each time in the description box as well as on my blog post. Okay, so for the coloring, I stamped these images out on Transotype Perfect Coloring Paper, which is an incredible paper if you ask me. And if you are wondering which paper I would recommend for copy coloring, it would definitely be this one. Before this one, I used Nina, uh, which is an amazing cardstock as well. And I love the thickness. I had the 110 pound cardstock, uh, which is quite heavy, uh, but really great as well. I used that and I adored it. And I loved how the Copics uh, worked out on that paper. But it couldn't just handle any amount of layers. And that was something that was bothering me uh, in my search of getting to know my Copics and coloring more with them and getting a bit more into those deep shadows. I needed just more layers, more wiggle room. And that is something that I really get when I'm using Transotype Perfect Coloring Paper. Um, so that's why I am using it ever since I bought one pack um, and I can only recommend it. Uh, of course there are other papers and you might have your favorite then just choose your favorite. This one is mine and I can only recommend it if you're looking for paper to color with Copics or alcohol markers in general or in case you are like me and at a certain point um, having trouble with finding your paper where you are living um, then this might be a nice backup to have at home. Okay, so I just moved on to the koala. Uh, my coloring goes from darkest to lightest and I just go back until I'm happy with the blend that I have. Um, most of the time that means that I am adding two layers. Uh, but in case I need more, this paper will be able to handle it. In case you have other paper that is not really good at handling or at a certain point is getting oversaturated, just use your heat gun, let that paper dry, give it a bit of time to rest if you don't have a heat gun and go back afterwards. That will also help to keep it from going outside the lines without you doing that sort of bleeding that we call it. So that is something that I can recommend as well. For the coloring today I was lucky and I got it done by two layers um, as normal. Something that I'm also doing as you might have noticed and here again is I'm trying to leave some sort of a sliver of white in between my darkest color and the lines of the image there where it is not overlapping. This is a technique that I saw by Amy Young. Uh, she's an amazing, amazing person. She's also really, really sweet. Um, but she shares her coloring live on Facebook. Um, and this is sort of a way to sort of let those images or critters appear more rounded. And it's something that I like doing from time to time. I don't always take the time to leave just that slight sliver and then later on fill it up with a, a lighter marker. Uh, but whenever I fill up for it, I am doing that. Just give it a bit of that rounded feeling. And then again, a second layer. 
I remember that the brown combination that I'm using here for the fox was actually my first brown combination ever and I still adore it. It's so adorable. Um, on the other side, I find it, it is a bit orangey but not too much and I love an orange fox. I can truly admire some of these amazing crafters online that have these most adorable orange colored foxes. This sort of is a more browny orange uh, kind of fox combination that I truly adore. For the um, well pop of color today I'm using blue it's going to be a baby card and although um, I find that color should not be gender specific I tend to use for baby cards pinks and blues. That will not mean that this blue card cannot go for a girl uh, but I'm using a sentiment that will indicate boy. Um, so it's a bit stupid to think that boys are blue and that pink is only for girls. Uh, but I really love these two colors and whenever I have an excuse to use pinks, I will definitely use that. Uh, but you do you. This would be great as well with other uh, pops of colors, even purples, yellows, anything you think that might go with the person uh, that is going to receive it for the little one. Um, I think that's a great idea to base your colors on that if you are not prepping ahead. For the clouds, I'm just doing a little bit of flicking uh, upwards with some really light blue ones. Um, and I am going to use my colorless blender to push the edges a bit back, a bit more. Um, that will help me get that fluffy look. Uh, but there are many ways to color clouds and from time to time I'm just... I just switch on how to color that. I also colored in some hearts which are a bit darker than the clouds. I thought it was a nice idea but it's still in the same line. But in the end I'm not going to use these hearts. I will add some heart droplets in blue. Um, so I just kept them in the back of this stamp set. With all the coloring done, I'm going to use the matching dies to die cut all of the elements here. I also colored another cloud uh, without filming since it was exactly the same way um, on the side because I have three critters, I need three clouds and here I'm just pushing back that edge to just have it a bit more fluffy in case that's possible. So I did that and then I had to figure out what I wanted as a sentiment. I decided to stamp out some of these uh, text blocks from the stamp set itself and I used Weath ink from Concord and Ninth, which is a really soft brown ink. Next I die cut the second largest nesting decal mini slimline die out of the set from Hello Bluebird and I just love this edge. I truly truly adore it. This mini slimline is slightly smaller than my regular ones um, that I have since I was on the Crafty Meraki design team and so I was introduced to the mini slimlines uh, through the dies by Crafty Meraki which I adore. They are slightly um, larger than the mini slimlines from Hello Bluebird but I just snipped off a piece of my card base just to fit um, this size. I love, love, love this edge and I just decided to add a little bit of Aqua Sky Concord and Ninth ink on the edges, just have it a bit dreamy and this color worked great with that blue that I have on the clouds, that's why I chose this one and not a distress ink. Um, and then it was time to play around with placement. Um, as you know, the number three, it always works design-wise, it's really a go-to if you don't know necessarily how or where to place things. So I have three clouds with three cuties on top and then I have these blocks with words, uh, three as well. And I'm just going to put all of them a little bit different on top of this panel. Some items I will let just overhang a bit. Why? Um, because I have this space, as I said, this is the second largest die from the Nestling Decal Mini Slimline die. And so I still have quite a bit of a border. Therefore, I just took my Mini Slimline card base and I'm going to add a piece of that same wreath cardstock from Concord and Ninth. This time to match with that sentiment and just keep it really 
natural and soft at the same time while combining some color on top of this card. As you probably know me, I am just the worst with trimming paper down exactly to size so I tend to just grab a piece of paper that is slightly bigger than my car base, add it on top and then trim off the excess. This way I am sure that it is completely covering my car base. And then it was time to adhere everything on top of this panel. I am going to add these critters with thin foam squares and I just had to just have a bit of wiggle room over there. So I really softly added it on top of the clouds, not too hard because I still needed to take that cloud and add it with some liquid glue on that panel as well. So I'm just barely touching it with the thin foam squares and then I can lift it all up at once and I'm not messing up spacement, placement, spacement, placement. Um, so that's why I really like this. I also considered using present seal but I really wanted to play a bit with dimension and since there were multiple items on top of one cloud I thought that what that might have been a bit difficult so I just took it this way uh, but many ways to adhere of course your elements. So again here a bit of thin foam squares then some liquid glue here that will go behind the cloud so I just added a dot of liquid glue on that sentiment block and then I'm going to lift everything up all at once and adhere it as well. So as you can see this image is sort of hanging off the edge as well as the bear but then the fox is not. I'm trying always whenever I have three images or three embellishments to sort of work in a triangle kind of shape and if possible uh, I'm just making sure that those sides don't look exactly the same size. Um, and that's something that really works for me, just a really random triangle. Um, that's how I like to place three elements if I can. So on the back of this panel I'm adding some scotch 3M foam tape and then I'm going to remove the backings, take my time to place this panel as centered as possible on my card base and then we will just add a few hearts on top as well. So for the embellishments, the hearts, I definitely think you can add stars, stars that were die cut or embellishments that you might have at home. Uh, but since I originally thought that I was going to add those stamped out hearts, I was really inspired by that, also by the color that I started coloring them, the blue. And so I looked for embellishments later on and I found these droplets pool hearts from Little Things from Lucy's Cards and they were just perfect. So I had to wiggle a bit with where I was going to place all of the hearts. I was also playing a bit with sizes. There are two sizes in this pack. From time to time you have three sizes. Um, I just adore it when there are multiple sizes because you can play around with it. And I love having a bigger and a smaller one next to each other. Like I am trying to place here as well. And there we go, we added our embellishments. Now you can add a lot more, you can also add glossy accents, glitter if you want to. But I just wanted to keep it as simple as possible, so this will be my card for today. A really simple, soft but sweet baby card. Perfect for a baby boy since I use this sentiment, but you can switch that up if you want to. Change the ink, change the card stock in the back if you want to. There are so many possibilities to make this card your own and I hope that I could inspire you to maybe try something similar like this. I want to thank you all for stopping by. I truly, truly appreciate you all being here. I am so flattered that you stopped by and I'll be back soon with some new crafty inspiration. Bye!